Let's start with a definition. We're going to call a subgroup a subset of a group that is itself a group. So if you take part of a group and it still has all the properties of a group, we'll call it a subgroup. So that's fairly simple, but let's take a look at a couple of examples. So if we have just a simple little group, we have the integers 0, 1, 2, 3, add, under, we're going to add them mod 4. We know that that's a group, we've looked at that before. So what about the set containing 0, 2? So we want to see if that has all the properties of a group. Probably the easiest way is to look at the Cayley table, which is very simple since there's only two elements. We've got 0, 2, 0, 2. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, which mod 4 gives us 0. So there's a number of things we should notice from this. First of all, notice that this operation is in fact closed. If I add two elements of H, I'm always getting another element of H. Certainly, it has an identity. And also from the Cayley table, we can see that we have inverses. Zero is its own inverse, and two is its own inverse. So the only other group property that we have to concern ourselves with is associativity. But again, this is all based on addition. We know addition is associative, so it is in fact associative. So we've got a closed binary operation. It has an identity. It has inverses. The operation is associative. Therefore, that is in fact a group. And therefore, it's a subgroup of G. Another example, this time we've got an infinite example. We're going to start with the integers, and then we're going to look at the set of even integers. Well, I basically need to look at those same exact properties we did right here. Is it closed? Well, I'm not going to do a big proof, but if you add two even integers, you get an even integer. Does it have an identity? Yes. Zero is an even integer. We know that adding zero is doesn't change what we add it to. Inverses, yes, because anytime you've got an even integer, the opposite sign of that is also an even integer. And again, we can say it has associativity because it's just normal addition. We know normal addition is associative. I'm going to wrap up this video with a few little notations and things. When we're talking about sets and groups, less than or equal to doesn't refer to our standard numerical comparison. Less than or equal to is going to mean a subgroup. So H less than or equal to G, we're really going to read it as H is a subgroup of G. And just like less than means that it can't actually be equal, we're going to mean the same kind of thing here h less than g is going to mean that h is a proper subgroup of g. That is, it's a subgroup but not the full group g. Because if we go back to our original definition here of a subgroup, there's nothing that prevents G from being a subgroup of itself. G is a subset of itself. Because G is a group, it is a group under the operation of G. So G is a subgroup of itself, but not a very interesting one. So often we're going to say, look, it needs to be a smaller set. It needs to have not all of G, and we'll call that a proper subgroup. Finally, if you just take the identity element, that's always going to be a subgroup as well, because 
it's closed. You take the identity times the identity, you get the identity. Kind of by definition, it has the identity. The identity is its own inverse. And with only one element in there, it's always going to be associative. So again, it's a subgroup, but it's not a very interesting one. So we'll call that the trivial subgroup. 